Hey guys, welcome back to Out of Work Outdoors. And in the past six months, I've been just researching dual batteries. So dual battery systems, dual battery batteries, types of batteries, where to install them, cables, you know, everything. So stick around, I'll teach you guys everything I know. Alright guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're, we are out of work outdoors. This is Connery. And today we're gonna, I want to talk about dual battery setups because uh, I was pretty confused going into that subject and I didn't find a real good video out there. So what I'm going to attempt to do is explain to you guys what I've gone through in the past six months. So when we're talking dual battery systems, it's very common in the higher end cars, so you, say the Land Cruisers and things like that. But most of the other cars and vehicles will not have it. Boats don't have this setup for the most part. Uh, but what it is is you have a main battery. Let's just say it's the main starter battery that's designed to crank the starter to turn the engine on. But in a single battery setup, all of your accessories runs off, runs off that single battery too. And it is a somewhat specialized battery. It's a starter battery. It's not designed to run electronics really long term. So when you're running a lot of stuff off this main battery, it can drain it down and then you go to crank the car or boat, whatever, and it doesn't crank, right? So that's where the secondary battery comes in. And that's the whole subject we're, we're going to try to, uh, say, diagnose or try to point you in the right direction where you want to go. Because as soon as you come into this world, it goes left and right real quick. Okay, so what I mean by that is... You want to run your accessories, you know, lights, fridges. For us, it's mainly battery charging capabilities for this camera, as an example. Uh, you want to run all of that off the accessory battery so that even when your truck or car or boat is turned off, your charger equipment is still running. So I think everybody understands even charging a phone, it takes you know, one or two hours to charge, but you can't leave your engine off for one or two hours. I mean, you can run off the battery, the starter battery, but you're trying to not do that. You know, trying to, that's that's like your last resort type of thing. You don't want to use that unless if you have to. So when you have a backup battery or a secondary battery, uh, you can charge, you can run lights, you can do all these other things uh, with the secondary battery. So if you drain it down completely, no big deal. You can go back to the car, truck, vehicle, whatever, crank it on, and it will charge that battery again. So, in and itself is a battery that will charge other batteries, in a sense, right? So, when I first started, I wanted that capability. And the reason why is, we do a lot of fishing, we do a lot of, uh, our challenge is a lot of fishing, right? And we do some capping, we're not overlanders or anything like that, subject to change, but... Uh, there was a need, and here's the major thing is you have to also see a need for this. Otherwise, it's going to be a very pricey project, okay? Uh, we saw a need, at least I saw a need on my truck, because our past vehicles have had dead batteries on the boat ramps. Because uh, when we go and fish, a lot of times people call, come to talk to us, and we'll have, you know, the headlights running on high beams. We'll have... Uh, I mean, all the lights are on and stereos going, and you get to talking to people, uh, subscribers and other fishermen. You know, an hour and a half goes by, and then you know, uh, you go to crank the engine, and if you have a weak battery to start with, that battery's not going to crank the motor over. So it's been twice we had to jump start the cars. It has is a good thing that we had friends close by who can jump start, and we had jumper cables on board. Which, which is always a good thing to have. But I wanted to get away from that. I wanted to get away from, like, you know, just in case things go south. So, you one, is you want to be self-reliant. Two is we fish so much that during the summer months, we I find myself having to go and grab ice all the time. Or, or for example, here's another great case is we go fishing and... We, on the way home, we have to go grab ice for our fish because we don't want it to go bad. So we might run a big fridge in the back of the truck. Just saying, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a big possibility. 
So this is gonna be a kind of long video, so if you have coffee, go ahead and grab them, take a sip. That's right, the mouse. But as a, as a side effect, more than likely for what I will be using my, my dual battery system for is we have a farm. So when we go to the farm, there's no electricity on the farm. So we I have an inverter in the back. So we can run, you know, medium-sized saws. We can charge batteries. Uh, you know, that type of stuff. Um, that's very helpful for me. So that's kind of my goal. My goal is not to run something for, you know, days on end. Uh, I currently don't have solar power, so that's one thing we're going to talk about here in a bit too. But here's a good scenario that uh, that I could see myself using. So if you say we were say we're going we're going camping, right? You get to camp, but you want to leave home base. Say say that's your home base camp, right? You want communications to be on all the time in case somebody goes out of the base. Out of the base, say they're going on a nature walk or something, and they bring a little walkie-talkie with them, a handheld, and you have the 50 water GMRS radio, you want it to be on the whole time and so in case somebody wants to phone you and the group you go pick up, you know. Something like that I could see good use for. Um, so that that's kind of the extent of my use for this dual battery setup, right? Uh, at the same time, like I said, we do a lot of fishing, so we do have these batteries. These are the batteries that we run in our kayaks for our tournament uh, world. And they're 30 amp hour batteries. Now the ultimate goal is to have these batteries stay in the truck the whole time. The truck charges the batteries and we'll never even have to take the batteries out of the car or the truck. So after a long day of fishing, you plug them in, the truck just takes care of it, right? And then when you're ready to go fishing again, it's already in the truck and you have to get it out of the garage. So that whole just making the system easier for you, that's kind of what we want. Okay, so let's talk about the costs. Okay, cost is... Uh, Cost is really up to you. So it really, um, it kind of ranges from about that $200 range to, I would say, $5,000, $6,000, depending on what you want to do, how complicated you want to make it, and it's going to vary drastically on just the type of batteries you're going to pick. So let's talk about battery types too. I'm just going to go with the top three that are commonly used okay there's a lot of them out there but the top three the batteries that come with your vehicle from the dealer 95 percent of them are going to be a lead acid battery it's not going to be a sealed battery it's just going to be a basic lead acid battery lead acid batteries are pretty good they're, they're really cheap and they will do the job just fine and if you have a problem you can go to the dealership you can go to walmart you can buy them on amazon you could it's, it's cheap. It's everywhere, right? So you can buy it, bam, put it in, it's good to go. A step up from that will be the AGMs, which will, which is also an acronym for Absorbed Glass Mat. AGMs are an evolution of the lead acid batteries. So in a way, they are their own category, but it's not a real big jump. So downsides of the lead acid battery, it's heavy. Uh, AGMs still heavy, but the AGMs can take vibrations a lot better. Okay, so the lead acids usually die off one if you're vibrating them too much. In case the Overlander people, uh, that's probably the number one reason why their batteries die. Their lead acid batteries die. So when you switch to the AGMs, it's pretty good. You know, it's gonna last a lot longer. That's why AGMs are very popular in the racing world, the off-road racing world. Um, very popular. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's it's going to, it is a step up. You're talking like a $100 battery to like a $200 battery. But at the same time, it is not a complete departure from battery because uh, you can't use all the stored capacity of a battery. Example, a lead acid battery rated 100 amp hours, you can use about 50 of those amp hours. And then your electronics doesn't want to work properly after that. AGM, in my opinion, you can use 60 to 60 to 75 percent of it and then it's done. The voltage drop off is what the engineering guys would say this is. And then, you know, so those are those are the those have been around those two categories have been around for a long time. Majority of the builds are gonna be those or a combination of those. So uh, a lot of guys will run a standard lead acid to crank their trucks with because 
it's easy to get in case the battery ever goes out. You know, say you're out in Utah or something, it goes out. You can always go grab another battery from the local Pet Boys, whatever, right? But the AGM, they use to run all the accessories. So AGM batteries are typically better. Uh, we'll, put a, we'll take one step back. Lead acid batteries, there's two categories of lead too. There's a starting battery and then there's a deep cycle. Okay, so if you have a starting battery and then if you have a secondary battery, it should be a deep cycle. Okay, AGMs can typically do both. They're not too picky, especially if you go with a good brand like an Optima. They, they tend to, can do both, okay? Just pick the right one, okay? And then you have the latest newcomer to the to the game of batteries, and that's lithium, lithium lipos. Okay, so these batteries, in terms of price, they're gonna be three times the price, three to 10 times the price of a standard lead acid. So if you get a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, at maybe 150, 100 amp hour lithium is gonna run you over a thousand. That's kind of like the regular price right now, right around thousand. So it's almost 10 times the price. Uh, but the flip side is the lithium, if it's rated 100 amp hours, you can use the entire 100 amp hours. Well, maybe not, maybe like 95% of it, but you get my drift. It's, it's, you can use all of it. Uh, so when you're doing your like uh, refrigerator calculations, things like that, so if, if a lead acid if a lead acid battery can run a fridge for two days, the same equivalent lithium can run it for four days. So you know it's, it's a big benefit. But do do you really want to do that because the cost is kind of high? So that's kind of that's kind of you, and that's kind of what you are gonna have to budget. Now the best, in my opinion, the best two things about the lithiums is one, the voltage stays real real high. Lithiums carry a voltage of 13 volts all the way pretty much into the false light on its face. Uh, standard batteries, they go about 12.5 and they kind of taper off. Okay, so that's kind of the, 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 the negatives of each of the uh, categories of batteries. But also, the lithium is very lightweight. So, I mean, example this, this is a standard lead ass battery, it's rated for 20 amp hours, right? 20 amp hours, but you can only use about 10, okay? On my fish finder, on my kayak, I can run that for about a solid, no, a solid 9, 10 hours. And then false flat in the face. Same size battery. 30 amp hours. Lithium. I can run this battery, same kayak, same electronics, everything, two solid days. We're talking... Two, maybe 16 hour days, 16, 17 hour days. Well, total, right? So you go from eight to about 16, so it's double, okay? So you can use all the power. And that's the benefit of the lithium batteries. And it's lightweight, okay? So you think about this one, maybe 20 pounds, maybe 14 pounds, 12 to 14 pounds. So you double the power, half the weight. Hey. That's a big deal. So for, for, for a lot of guys, they can't pack on the, the weight. Maybe their maybe their rigs are like weight conscious. You know, like like for example, a boat is a great example. The more you put on a boat, the slower it goes. Uh, same with overland builds. Sometimes guys put on so much stuff on the truck, the truck literally picks up another thousand pounds, and you're like, uh, I can't do another two hundred pounds of batteries. Lithium might be the choice for you. That's all I'm saying. Ooh, almost forgot one thing. Battery location, where to mount them, right? Um, if you Google dual battery kit, something something along that that kind of you know nature, you're gonna see a lot of uh, kits with wires and isolators, but they're designed to mount the batteries under the hood. Both your batteries under the same hood. Uh, not a lot of people will have a battery located you know somewhere else in the cab or in the bed of a uh, the truck or vehicle or the truck of vehicle. Um, so a lot of times you'll see like two batteries just squished together with a tie down and there's two batteries, there might be an isolator and that's it. So depending on what type of batteries you run, um, you might have to run that battery somewhere else. What I'm saying, this pertains to lead acids and AGMs. Those batteries, they can be installed under the hood because they don't mind the heat because it gets about 150, 160 degrees underneath the hood. It gets pretty hot. 
but if you're running a lithium battery, it's kind of sensitive to the extreme heat. So a lithium needs to be installed somewhere else. Hence our, our build, our build running a lithium battery. Okay, so, so this is another thing. You can't, it's not really like you're picking your types of batteries and you can do, you know, pick things as you go. You have to pick this at the same time when you pick your battery types, okay? So, uh, how to charge your batteries? How do you charge your batteries? It can be really simple or it can be really complicated, okay? So, let's start with the simplest, simplest setup, okay? You're going to put both your batteries underneath your hood, okay? And then you have an alternator, which is basically your battery charger that that, that comes off the sense power from the engine, just put it that way. Uh, it's charging the first battery, right? And then it needs to charge the second battery as well. So a lot of people say, why don't you just tie them together? That's a great idea. Now how you do that is you use one of these guys. This has been around for a long time. It costs $12. Uh, you tie the positive of one battery here, the positive of the other battery here, put a switch here, run a switch, a 12 volt switch here, and then you put a ground right here. You flip the switch, it closes the uh, terminals, turn the switch off, it opens them. It's that simple, it's 12 bucks. So if you're running dual lead acid batteries, bam! It don't get much more easier than that. Just run that, don't talk about electronics, don't talk about all this other stuff, okay? Because you're just wasting your money. I really think you're wasting your money, okay? Because the benefits, because if you're gonna go with dual lead acids, your focus is already economical. I wanna do it for a cheap, so bam, solution right there. If you want to go lead acid AGM, you can still run that system, just know that the AGM battery requires, it doesn't require, it prefers a special charger, okay? So you could still run this, you'll be fine. Just understand that your AGM battery may not be topped off. Like it'll charge up to about 8% and that's max. Because it needs a higher voltage to bring it up to max. And your current car can only do about 13.5. A lot of these AGMs and lithiums, they require like 14 or higher to, uh, to fully charge. Okay, so that's the low end of the spectrum. That's the cheap end of the spectrum. For the most part, I think 90% of the people are gonna fall into that spectrum, okay, that spectrum. And then the middle, middle of the ground guys will run an AGM battery, okay? So the AGM battery, you can still run the isolator and it's fine, but majority of the people are gonna also want the ability to top it off. So they will run what is called a DC to DC charger where it takes battery number one, basically acts like this thing, okay? But it's smart, it boosts the power up to fully charge the secondary battery because it is somewhat of a special battery. And same with the lithiums. If you run lithium, you have to, in my opinion, you have to run a smart isolator, smart charger. If you don't, then it defeats the whole purpose of the lithium, okay? So the lithium will probably come up to like 70% and that's about it. So if you're running AGMs, yeah, you're running lithiums, definitely, okay? DC DC charger with a lithium profile, don't forget for that. So a lot of DC DC chargers, they may or may not come with a lithium lipo charge profile. So make sure it's got the charge profile for your battery type. Um, so there's a lot of those brands too though. So, so this is, as far as charging capabilities, this is 12 bucks, okay? Eh, say it's under 20. 10 to 20 dollars as soon as you go into the dc dc charging world you're looking anywhere from 150 to 400 okay so that's kind of where it's at so you can charge oh yeah the other thing was you don't want this on lithium okay you don't want this on lithium because a lithium battery will accept so much current it might burn up your alternator okay so you don't want this on lithiums lithiums have a real real low internal resistance Another, another battery term for you. But basically, don't do this on lithiums. You'll probably burn up your alternator or prematurely kill it. All right, AGMs and lead acids, they're all right. Okay, so inverters. Uh, not inverters, let's, still, let's stay on the uh, um, 
DC DC Chargers. So DC DC Chargers, there's a lot of them. You know, that's a whole like category in itself. Uh, but just know that some of them are designed to just charge, go from one battery to another battery. Okay, and then some of them can also take a solar input, so you can run solar power as well. So that's pretty cool. We'll talk about that later. Um, for the most part, the DC DC charger does a lot for you in terms of maintaining the battery and some of them actually comes back and jump starts the car they have the capability some of them do some of them don't um oh oh while we're on the subject of charging okay so this is really really pertains to okay so while i'm looking at this uh, forget one thing. So this is actually pretty critical too. Modern day cars have what is called a smart charger or a variable voltage charger. Okay, so kind of like pre-2005, you have a traditional charger. Charger spins, it sends out power. Same amount of power. Post-2005, alternator spins, it can go up, send out power that's really high or send out power that's really low. Same speed, okay? So the why do they do that is they do that for one fuel economy and two you won't you don't want to overcharge a battery that's already charged, okay? So that's the reason why they do it. But that is uh that's that's meant for that charging system is meant for lead acid. So when we're gonna fully charge a lithium, we need to say, look, whatever comes our way, DC DC charger, you convert it to lithium profile. And that's what the DC DC is really for. So keep that in mind if you're doing, if you want completely full charges on the AGMs and the lithiums, it's got to be on a DC DC charger. Got it? Good. Let's go over wires. Okay, so if you're wiring anything, oh yeah, in terms of wiring, our electrical system here is all 12 volts. Okay, so wiring basically go online, get a guide. Okay, a guide will say, okay, you're going to wire X length. You're gonna pull X amount of power, you should have that fat of a cable. <laughs> so a lot of your cables are gonna be pretty big. For the guys that don't do automotive wiring, uh, you can just go open up the hood and look at the cable, the ground cable coming off the battery that goes to your to the body of the car, the chassis of the car. That's gonna be the minimum you're gonna be running. You're gonna be running like 20, 25 feet of this stuff. At least for me, I, I've, my lithium setup is in the back. So I run from the front to the back, and this stretch is 20 feet. So I run six gauges, I run two gauge, and I run like 14s. So for me, I run the smaller wires are all just signal wires, and everything else is power wires, okay? So uh, I don't run, I'm not a big power hog, so I calculated my system fairly well. Majority of the time, I'm pulling 50 amps or less. So for 50 amps and less, my guide says six size, size six, so six gauge, you'll be fine. And that's what I'm doing, six gauge, for the majority of the, the, the system. Uh, but I am running a two gauge for my, uh, my, uh, my winch. So after everything is wired up and everything's properly charging and everything, um, the next step you'd want, I think most people are gonna want this, is some type of an inverter. So it can take your 12 volts and convert it back to 120 or 220, depending on what country you're in, so you can plug in your your items, whatever you're trying to use. So like I said before, for me, this is where it really comes into play. This is the beauty of the dual battery system for me, is the ability to, say, charge batteries where I'm off-grid or at the land, you know? I mean, it's only like a five-minute road trip, but at the same time, Say you have a project, you know, you're trying to build something, say you're building a shack or something like that, and you have power tools. You know, the power tools need to be charged. Say you won't have two batteries, but it's going to require, you know, at least six batteries to build a shack in one day. You're running, like, saws, you're running all these other stuff, and it's all battery-powered. You need something to charge batteries while you're still using batteries. So this is where the beauty of it comes in. And that's probably where I will see the most use. And... For me, you know, I have a 500 watt inverter inside the cab and I have a 1000 watt inverter 
in the back of the truck to power whatever I want. Pretty much can power almost anything you want at a thousand watts. Well, I can't say that. Majority of the smaller items you can power with a thousand watts. So the inverter is a is a integral part of a dual battery system. So you look into that. There's a lot of brands out there. That a lot of them uh, do a lot of you know shitty jobs, and a lot of them do pretty good jobs. So go with a brand name. The one thing I do want to stress is there's two types. There's a modified sine wave and there's a pure sine wave. The pure sine wave is going to be the more expensive one. But the pure sine wave is the one that's going to look just like the power that comes into your house. It's pure sine wave. It's only like maybe another 50 bucks. So be sure to get that one. Be sure to get the pure sine wave. It's for, why do you want it? It's before, it's really designed for the sensitive equipment. So like if you're powering uh, you know, chargers and you're powering cameras and things like that off that power then you kind of want the uh, the pure sine wave. If you're just running saws and stuff like that, then it doesn't really care. But do do know that the pure sine wave is better if you want to go that route. And if you can't afford it, get it. Okay, so once we start talking inverters and all this other stuff, we're going to start talking power management. So there's a lot of power stuff that I haven't talked about yet. So how do you know how much battery life is left in your batteries? That's a good question. So... You can kind of based off memory and take a rough guess, or you can actually have, you know, systems installed that give you run times that are left, uh, give you battery percentage in your system and things like that. Things like that, I think, are not absolutely necessary. They're just, they're just really good to have. So a lot of brands do that. Basically, you have a, a measuring or a sensing device with a little LED printout, and you can install it. You can configure it for your your uh, your battery setup which once again it's kind of a custom setup uh and you'll be okay so it'll all give you it'll give you readouts you either it's on the screen or whether it's on bluetooth or wi-fi whatever uh the 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 systems are out there um but that just measures power being used and power that's gone back into the battery so it's an in and out type of system all right, so so that, so for me, I didn't, I didn't, I don't want a system like that. Oh, well, actually, I do want, but I don't need it. So for my system, you're not going to see it. Maybe down the road, perhaps, but right now, I'm not because because it wasn't in my budget. Decided not to. Decided to go a different route. And when I say different route, I wanted my system to be much, much more advanced than uh, than anything else that's uh, available. So for me, having like an engineering background and you know just playing with relays, and isolators, and chargers, and all this other stuff, I wanted actual power management not 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 power measurement power management so i wanted uh, the capability to say you have two batteries and you have cab power and you have bed power the bed or trunk whatever you want to call it i want the capability to send power this way this way this way or this way basically it's a grid i've designed a grid for my system it's very advanced i don't know if anybody wants to see it but if you do want to see it i'll do another video on my uh, my tacoma uh it is a very advanced system for what i've seen com compared to what i've seen on the internet i'm not saying it's the best system i'm just saying it's, it suits my world very well i could do a lot of cool things with it i could say run the inverter strictly off the the alternator or i can divert it back to the the lithium that's out back or I can run a winch. I can run the winch off the lithium. I can run the winch off the alternator. Not really recommend off the lithium, but you can run off the alternator, start a battery. That's where it's supposed to be. Uh, but, you know, I can divert power back and forth. Um, I can charge batteries and use the alternator power to run all the accessories at the same time versus having the charge power everything. So there's a lot of little things like that that uh, I've really thought it through, at least on my build. And if you guys really want to know that, Comment below, sub to the channel, and we'll, so when that video drops, you'll get a, uh, a notification. All right, guys, well, that's dual batteries. Everything I know about them, kind of, you know, crammed into one little video. I know it's probably like 20 or 30 minutes, but let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, let me know if I missed something, because I know I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I missed something. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Connery from Out of Work. See you guys on the next one.